ABC Kinder Teach presents Anatoly and the Cat, written by Eve Titus, illustrated by Paul Galdone. In all France, there was no mouse more honored, other people thought was great, or respected than Anatoly. He was very proud of his job as cheese tester at the factory of Mijou Duval. Nobody knew that he was not a man, but a mouse, not even Mijou Duval, for he did his work after the others went home. So a mouse is a cheese taster because mice are supposed to like cheese. Always his dear wife, Dosette, blew him a kiss as he left the mouse village, or small town, and bicycled off to Paris on business. After their six charming, or very likable, children were sound asleep. And that is Paul, that is Paulette, that is uh, Georges, that is Georgette, that is Claude, and that is Claudette. So three boys and three girls, all in one bed. One night he entered the cheese tasting room with Gaston, his good friend and helper. Anatoly tasted some brie, which looks like this, and made a face. Too salty. Give me a not-so-good sign, and I'll write it down. Just then they heard soft footsteps on the floor above. They began to shiver and shake and quiver and quake. It is a cat, cried Anatoly. Still, we must do our job. As long as he stays upstairs, we work. As soon as he starts downstairs, out the window we go. They did their best, but they were much too frightened. Gaston kept dropping signs on the floor, and Anatoly scribbled just anything that came into his head. Alas, I fear I have made some serious mistakes, he said, but it's all the fault of that awful animal. To be a cat is to be a monster and a menace something dangerous. Then they ran for the window. The cat was on the stairs. They climbed down in a big hurry and bicycled home at about a mile a minute, which means like 60 miles an hour, which is as fast as a car goes on many roads. That night, millions of cats marched through Anatoly's dreams, shouting, Down with Anatoly! Down with Anatoly! Which means, fire him from his job. At dawn, when the sky turned pale pink, he left his bed as miserable, or very unhappy, as a mouse could be. At breakfast, he could scarcely, or barely, swallow his food. The children were upset to see him looking so sad. What is worrying our dearest papa? they asked anxiously, but Anatoly felt they were still too young to learn about cats, and he hurried them off to school. Then he hung his head in the deepest despair, feeling that there was no hope. Dose that there was a you-know-what at the factory. A cat. She turned pale. Quelle horreur. What will you do? It is with such pride that I earn my family's bread and cheese instead of stooping, or having to beg, to take people's scraps. Must I change my honorable way of life because of this beast? So does this mean that he has to quit being a cheese taster and just being a regular mouse? Hmm, let's see. But Dosette said, No cat has appeared there before. 
Perhaps this one came out of curiosity and will never return. Anatoly hugged her. You give me new hope. Ma petite. How would I manage without such a jewel of a wife? A great wife. And he ate his breakfast for now. He had an appetite. So she made him feel better, saying, hmm, that cat probably won't come back. At that very moment, the factory was in a hullabaloo, a lot of noise and fuss. The cheese workers were quarreling like cats and dogs or arguing. Half of them shouted that they must do what the signs said. The other half screamed that the signs were full of mistakes. They sent for Mijou Duval, the president of the factory, right there. He came at once with a large cat perched, sitting on his shoulder. Regardez. They cried, pointing to the sign. Mijou Duval scratched his head, greatly puzzled, confused about a problem. What strange signs! I trust Anatoly as I would trust myself. Has he not made our cheeses the finest in all France? Still, it does seem odd to wrap cheese in a banana peel. And who ever heard of using chopped cucumber seeds? Can it be that he has invented some brand new cheeses? Or has Anatoly been working too hard? I shall send him a memo. A letter often used in business. Inquiring, or asking about, as to his health. Meanwhile, men, do just what the signs order you to do. And he left the room, patting his cat and saying, You did not come home last night. Where were you? Mon ami. The cat heard and blinked his bright green eyes and here's some of the things that he wrote not so good use frog legs no good but use six moldy marshmallows Ugh. good needs melted chocolate extra specially good throw it in the garbage pail no good use crushed jelly beans good but wrap it in a banana peel extra specially good Mix in some pistachio ice cream. Not so good. Toast it in a snail shell. Ugh. Especially good. Add chopped cucumber seeds. When Anatoly tooted his horn for Gaston that night, his friend appeared at the window holding a little bell. I am a mouse of caution, is careful. I do not wish to live dangerously. You must work alone at the factory after this. Mouse-eating monsters are not for me. Then he tinkled the bell. Of course, if you can bell the cat, which means put a bell on it. Make no jokes about such a serious matter. Au revoir. Squeezing under the factory door, Anatoly listened for cat sounds, but happily there were none. In the tasting room, he found a short memo from Mizu Duval asking him whether he felt quite right and begging him to take a holiday if he needed one, which means like a vacation. He went to Mizu Duval's office and typed a memo in reply. From Anatoly to Henry Duval about cats. There are some who dislike dogs or goldfish or parakeets. Myself, I do not care for cats. Last night, one of these creatures was in your factory. I was so disturbed that my work was not as good as usual. If a cat appears again, I may be forced to give up my job, much as I enjoy working for you. This he left in the typewriter. Now, we shall see what we shall see, which means we'll see what he's going to do about it. The next night, there was a second memo from Mijou Duval in reply to the memo from Anatoly. From Henry Duval to Anatoly about my cat. Our family pet is a cat who accompanies, or comes with, me to work each day in my limousine, which may look something like this, 
returning home with me at closing time. Now I know where he was the other night. I have scolded him, told him to behave, and he has strict orders, must follow exactly, not to remain in the factory after dark. I hope that henceforth, from now on, you will be able to work in peace. Your expert judgment in cheese has made my success possible. Merci beaucoup. At first, Anatoly rejoiced, was very happy. My worries are at an end. He has no more worries. This cat loves Monsieur Duval and will surely obey him. But then he asked himself, is a cat to be trusted? And the answer was no, no or no. At home, he sat silent, staring at the slanting rain. It was not coming straight down. Remembering Gaston's joke and a tale known the world over. Long, long ago, many mice had met to decide what to do about a cat. Someone had the idea of putting a bell around its neck. This would warn them of its coming, and all were pleased until a wise old mouse said, But who will bell the cat? Or put the bell on the cat. Not one mouse had dared to do it then or ever. So they won't put a bell around the cat, but they don't know how to do it. There must be a way, thought Anatoly, pacing, moving back and forth, up and down. For hours and hours his brain was busy with ideas, but they all seemed too dangerous until he suddenly remembered a big empty crate in the storeroom of the factory. And Anatoly smiled, for now he had the perfect plan. Before leaving, he asked to set for her sash, which looks like this. She was worried. Has it anything to do with the cat? Chérie. Be careful. Not all the cheese in France could replace you. Anatoly kissed her goodbye, telling her nothing. He stopped off at Gaston's and asked for the bell. Gaston guessed the reason. Do not risk your life, I beg of you. But Anatoly began stringing the sash through the top of the bell. The brute, mean animal or person, will be there tonight. I feel it in my bones. Believe something even if you don't know why. On the way to work, Anatoly entered a pet shop. He took a box of catnip, which looks like this. It's a plant that makes cats a little silly. Leaving some camembert cheese in payment. So he left some cheese to pay for the catnip that he took. Then he went to a hardware shop. There he took a door latch, leaving some Roquefort cheese, which looks like this, in payment. So he's paying with cheese. He arrived at the factory. He typed a memo in Mijou Duval's office. He hurried to the storeroom, where he tried the door of the crate. It swung to and fro easily, which means back and forth, and he hammered the latch into place. Then he put the catnip in the crate right there at the far end. So he put the catnip, and he wants the cat to go into the crate, and I think he's going to lock him in so he can put the bell on. Voilà. If a man may build a mouse trap, then a mouse may build a cat trap. He hid himself and waited. Soon his sharp ears heard sounds. Was it the cat or was it the thumping of his own heart? It was the cat smelling the catnip. He bounded or ran into the crate quick as a wink. Anatoly slammed the door, scurried up, or moved quickly, and latched the latch and scurried down. The angry cat tried and tried, but the door would not open. 
How dare you trap me, he raged. My name is Charlemagne, and I come from a long line of illustrious cats, famous and well-liked cats. My great, 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 grandfather was the pet of the emperor Charlemagne himself. Let me out. And it totally spoke softly. My dear Charlemagne, what about the catnip? I'll gobble it up and then beware, you little nobody of a mouse. But when the catnip was gone, Charlemagne completely forgot about Anatoly because the catnip makes him silly. He grinned and began to do all sorts of silly things, chasing his tail, turning somersaults, trying to stand on his head, and prancing and dancing wildly around the crate. Anatoly waited patiently, not a bit surprised. He knew Catnip did this to cats. At last, Charlemagne grew tired and stretched out and slept. Now or never, thought Anatoly, a sleeping cat cannot pounce. Jump on something quickly. The cat's loud snores were like the rumble of thunder, but the brave mouse did what had to be done. Even tying a big bow when he saw the sash was too long. Then he taped the memo to the crate and went upstairs. To celebrate, he fixed himself a special treat, a triple-decker sandwich with six different kinds of cheese. Memo from Anatoly to Henry Duval about your cat. I have belled your disobedient cat. Thus, I can stop work at a minute's notice and go home without coming face to face with the beast I detest. Greatly dislike. Naturally, the more often the cat comes, the less time I can give to my duties as first vice president in charge of cheese tasting. As a businessman, you should understand why it is wise to watch your cat. So he's saying, you know, if you don't take care of your cat and keep it away from me, then I'm not going to be able to do as much work. Upon hearing the news, Gaston gladly returned to work. Sometimes they were bothered by the tinkling of the bell, but Mijou Duval kept close watch on Charlemagne, and this happened only once in a while. When it did, the two friends dashed madly, or ran quickly, for the window and climbed down as fast as their legs would let them. One Friday night, Anatoly took his family to see the factory, bicycling along the boulevard toward Paris, the children said, Papa, did you think we were too young to be told about cats? Our teacher taught us all about them. So he didn't want to tell them about cats, but they already knew because their teacher told them. That was the night the wonderful letter was waiting. My dear Anatoly, because of last month's mistakes, the people of France all had stomach aches. They demanded that I go out of business, but I begged for another chance. Since then, your work has been so good that they have all taken the Duval cheeses back to their hearts, or should I say to their stomachs. And now, my dear Vice President, I have a surprise. On the night of the mistakes, one sign said, Add chopped cucumber seeds. This cucumber cheese is so tasty that it has become the people's favorite. Congratulations. In your honor, I have named it Cheese Anatoly, your friend, Henry Duval. P.S. Belling the cat was an excellent idea. Doucette was so pleased that she wept for joy, was so happy that she cried. Paul and Paulette, Claude and Claudette, and George and Georgette all exclaimed proudly, Our papa is so clever that a cheese has been named after him. And Gaston declared, I said it before and I say it once more. He is a mouse magnifique. Viva Anatoly. So, Anatoly again became the most honored, respected mouse in all France, and he was also the bravest because for thousands of years the mice of the world had talked about belling the cat, but Anatoly was the only one who did it. <laughs>